I'm going to be working on this power supply and I need to test it with loads so this transformer, bridge rectifier and capacitors I want to test them with a dummy load and I've been using these 35 watt 12 volt halogen bulbs three of them in series there uh, but I can see that I'm, as I go further into this project I'm going to need to test uh, with different loads so and more and a heavier load than what this produces so I decided to make a cheap and cheerful dummy load now I got those bulbs from Bunnings I think it was only about 10 bucks for 10 of them which is pretty good but they no longer have them so I got onto the net looked around finally found a bloke on Gumtree that was selling these for a dollar a shot 50 watt ones so I got 21 of them for 20 bucks so it's less than 50 cents each uh, a lot of people are getting rid of them because they're inefficient uh, they're putting in leads instead but their inefficiency is exactly why I want them because they consume a lot of power uh, so in the same trip that I went and got those bulbs I went to the scrap metal man the aluminium shop and got some aluminium tread plate I don't like but it was cheap and I had this piece of relatively heavy mesh sitting around what I'm going to do is drill holes in the plate about an inch 25 millimeters in diameter sit those in there and then have this sitting above and tie them down tie the wire down onto the plate I'm doing it with metal because these things get extremely hot and I was thinking originally of making some contraption out of wood but no, it's just going to get way too hot, so metal. So I've come up with this overlay for drilling the holes, and I'm about to do that. So th these inner circles are the holes I'm going to drill, the outer circles are just indication of where the bulbs are, and all these other holes as tie points for the wire, for the wire mesh. Right, the thread plate's been cut to size. And the overlay glued down and it's about 25 millimeters extra on each side for terminals and things so now to start drilling so there it is pretty messy business obviously I punched the holes first and drilled them drilled them a bit larger for the these holes and then hit them with the hole saw and lots of oil so. it's nice to stick all that aluminium into an induction heater and melt it up but too fiddly I might try getting the discs so and see what I can do with them so I'll do something about cleaning these up I think I'll have the globes come in on this side. And I spent a while trying to clean it up with, clean up the holes with uh, files until I got sick of it and then I hit it with this. Which, uh, yeah, taking the rough edges off the sides at least. Um, but maybe not the holes. I'll do some more polishing. A bit of a polish. I think that'll be good enough. Now, when I laid this out, I hadn't decided on how to connect things yet. I've decided on using four of these. Just with an M4 bolt at each end. So I'll put the holes for those. I'll drill them out. So there'll be one, two, three, four of those. Now we have a bit of progress here. I had a lot of holes on that base plate that didn't end up getting used. I was thinking I would uh, use wire to tie from once from the grating through to the back plate but then I tried just six bolts and it, it seems that one bolt between every four globes gives 
ample rigidity holds the globes in place well enough. So, 24 bulbs, these ones are all 50 watters. No, sorry, those there. These ones are 35 watters. So, in theory, uh, 1110 watts on the back. Terminals coming in. I've still got to wire all the globes onto the lugs that are sticking out at the bottom of these terminal blocks and once that's done and you'll be able to get any combination of globes by joining together the screw terminals. So I'm thinking of having a, a bunch of little leads with spade connectors on each end to allow that to be done and in the cases where Globes are just in series, well, I'll just have a little bit of wire linking from one screw across to the next. Uh, so, let's do the wiring. Right, I've wired up these barrier strips, terminal barrier strips. Uh, these globes, they don't take solder very well. You can solder them, but it's not easy. And what about trying to replace them? It's going to be a bit of a going to be a bit of a bugger. So, where did that go on? So I think I'll we'll be able to get a wire, get wire with just wrapping the wires around the post that you make good enough contact and they're not soldered when they're used normally, are they? So, should be good. That's how this is put together. Just bolts on the front. I have to fix them on this side because these have to be bolted down before the globes are put in and, and the, uh, the mesh over the top. So they have to go in first, that's why I've got a, a nut down the bottom and then spacers and spring washers and just a nut on top there will hold the strips in place. So I'll do the pins now. So here it is with the wires joined across to the bulbs, I just wrap them around and it seems to work pretty well. Now I've connected all of these in series with little loops there and these through to here, so out there. So uh, when I first tested this uh, a few issues came to light. Most obviously I knew this would happen but I was surprised to the, de the degree. The 35 watt bulbs, having a higher resistance, will hog more of the voltage than the 50 watt bulbs. So they'll get brighter, but they're a lot brighter than these. Although in theory, 24 12 volt bulbs in series should be able to be connected to 288 volts in practice because of these lower wattage ones, it can only be 175 volts because at that point, some of, the, some of these have 12 volts on them, which is their maximum. The second issue I encountered was while looking at turning it over to look at the brightness of the bulbs, this earth lead touched the chassis and tripped the safety switch, the residual current detector inside the variac, which is obviously a worry. Uh, and it turned out that down here, one of the one of these wires was touching that bolt, and clearly these six bolts that hold the mesh and the bulbs on uh, are at least five millimeters too long. So these four I will reduce from 35 millimeters to 30, which will prevent that sort of issue again. And the third issue I had was by far the most worrying and that was that as I was re rearranging the position of the variac in this thing I received a large electrical shock of the worst kind up one arm through the chest and down the other and that was with these two switches off I thought I was safe to touch this but no in fact even with that off neutral is live so there's some issue inside that periac and I'm pretty sure it's something to do with the way this power meter is wired up so I've got to investigate that 
ASAP. But clearly, for all those issues, and the obvious one of the exposed wiring, a device like this should not be used for high voltages. All right, I'm back to testing this power supply with my new dummy load. This is wired up as three bulbs in series, giving a 36 volt rating, and then two of that lot in parallel to double the current rating. And then again, for that's for one capacitor, and then again for the other capacitor. So turning up the volts going in to 240. Actually, 245. That gives us 7.5 amps at 33 volts. That's just measuring the current on one capacitor. It'll be very much the same on the other. And then looking at the oscilloscope, which doesn't work very well with um, this camera at line frequency, but you can see it's 2 volts per division. Sorry two divisions and each division is half a volt so it's one volt peak to peak ripple and on the other capacitor we've got about the same so that's uh, that represents 100, uh, 250 watts per channel so Dissipating 500 watts, and it's all coming through that transformer. And the power meter on the very access, we're sticking 639 volt uh, watts in, and we know we're taking 500 out, so that represents about 76% efficiency in the transformer. And let's see how hot it's getting. The actual core is quite cool, 26. But the windings are starting to warm up. I don't think it would be a good idea to run it at this power for extended periods, but it shows that when it needs to, it can. We'll leave it run for another few minutes and then have it measure the temperature. Again, 50 degrees on the side of the transformer. Bridge rectifiers. Warmish core staying cool. Fifty four is probably I shouldn't let it get much hotter than that, I don't think, so I'll turn it off now. And the plate being silver doesn't show up so, oh no, there we go 55 it's too hot to touch for more than a few seconds it's very burny there we go more like it's 60 degrees there 70 under Seven, 17 amongst the bulbs. 73. Yeah, so definitely metal is required. Too hot also. Oh, look at that. 90. Boil water there almost. table gets pretty warm as well. Another use for this dummy load. I got a few of these transformers. They're um, 150 VA. They're a custom made job but looking at the manufacturer's site and from its size and weight on that side I can see that it's meant to be 150 VA. So I want to find out <clears throat> if it can easily supply 150 VA and how hot it gets when it's doing it. So I've connected up the dummy load to have 
one, two, three, four sets of three bulbs in series. So ideally they'd want to run at 36 volts, but we won't be running that hard. I've got the two heaviest windings on the transformer, which are about eight or nine volts each. So they're in series now. So I'm putting about 16 volts into there rather than 36. So uh, it won't be drawing the 600 watts that all, all uh, 12 bulbs would consume if they were running at the full 36 volts. But we can take this up to consuming about 150 VA and see how, see how hot it gets. So we're winding up the Variac now. You can see current on this crappy clamp meter. I'm not sure, I don't, I don't trust that as far as I can start, but I've got nothing else to go by at the moment. I'm measuring AC current. There's the volts coming out of the transformer. 14 volts at 10.3 amps, so that's probably around about 100 VA. So, I can just run that for a while and feel how hot the transformer gets. So, that's what I'll do. I think it's been running for about 15 minutes. And, yeah, that's pretty warm. Not too hot to touch by any means. But, and then mounted in a metal case, it'll probably be able to dissipate a bit more heat. Um, so, yeah. 150A seems VA seems to be about right. Uh, wouldn't wouldn't want to leave it running that hot for long for extended periods, but yeah. So one use of the dummy load. So here's my 1200 watt bulb based dummy load. I'm not sure it made it into the edit, but uh, it's 1200 watts because all the bulbs are now 50 watts. The 35 watt ones, three of them burnt out because having a higher resistance in the series configuration they will hog the power and burn out and I've replaced the other three as well so now it's all 50 watts. Now it's a good static load, uh, very high power, 1200 watts is nothing to sneeze at but it's uh, because of the positive temperature coefficient of the bulbs which you know, all resistors have but bulbs, uh, the temperature range that they move through from, from room temperature up to 2500 degrees C means that the PTC, the, the positive temperature coefficient, uh, has a much more pronounced effect. Uh, I believe bulbs can go from something like, uh, well, 240 volt bulbs can go from 9.5 ohms to, at cold to 100 and something when they're running. That together with the so that non-linearity together with the time dependence of heating up and cooling makes them uh, only good as a static load where you uh, settle it to a certain current and don't change it. Uh, if you were to use this as a dynamic load, say with a MOSFET applying it on on and off to a power supply under test, um, I think it might be a bit hard to interpret what's going on because this this thing would be such a a load the resistance of this load would be all over the place so yes it, it's reasonably adjustable by fiddling these wires around every which way you can you can have them from you know, all 24 in parallel um, for testing I don't know a, a half volt power supply at 100 amps or something maybe not 100 amps, but it's through to uh, a all in series and you can uh, test a, a 280 volt power supply. So yeah, reason, reasonably flexible and cheap, a bit more expensive than I anticipated, but uh, I'm pretty happy with it. It's already proved to be quite useful. So there you have it, the cheap and cheerful 1200 watt halogen bulb Tell me load. Catch you later.